Earth Science is brought to you by Physics Classroom. Before we proceed to the continuation of our lesson in Earth Science, let us look back to the scenario when the Earth is young, 5 billion years ago. What we have just seen was all about the young earth and how its tectonic plates originated. We have also seen the hazardous effects of the geological processes that's still continuously happening on earth. There exists a scientific theory that explains how major landforms are created as a result of earth's deep or subterranean movements. This theory is known as plate tectonics. This explains many phenomena, including mountain building events, volcanoes, and earthquakes. In plate tectonics, the Earth's outermost layer, or lithosphere, which is made up of the crust and upper mantle, is broken into large rocky plates. These plates lie on top of a partially molten layer of rock, called the asthenosphere. Due to the convection of the asthenosphere and lithosphere, the plates move relative to each other at different rates from 2 to 15 centimeters or 1 to 6 inches per year. This interaction of tectonic plates is responsible for many different geological formations such as the Himalaya mountain range in Asia, the East African Rift, and the San Andreas Fault in California, United States. The idea that continents moved over time had been proposed before the 20th century. A German scientist named Alfred Wegener published two articles about a concept called continental drift in 1912. He suggested that 200 million years ago, a supercontinent he called Pangaea began to break into pieces, its parts moving away from one another. The continents we see today are fragments of that supercontinent. 
To support his theory, Wegener pointed to matching rock formations and similar fossils in Brazil and West Africa. In addition, South America and Africa look like they could fit together, like puzzle pieces. New data support the idea of continental drift. Ocean floor maps showed a massive undersea mountain range that almost circled the entire Earth. An American geologist named Harry Hess proposed that these ridges were the result of molten rock rising from the asthenosphere. However, there was one nagging question with the plate tectonics theory. Most volcanoes are found above subduction zones, but some formed far away from these plate boundaries. How could this be explained? This question was finally answered in 1963 by a Canadian geologist, John Tuzo Wilson. Wilson proposed that volcanic island chains are created by fixed hot spots in the mantle. As the plate moves over the hot spot, one volcanic island after another is formed. Wilson's explanation gave further support to plate tectonics. Today, the theory is almost universally accepted. Plate tectonics is a generally accepted theory that explains how the lithosphere is structured and how tectonic plates located on the Earth's surface move through its slides. It tells us how mountains were formed by orogenesis, why earthquakes and volcanoes are found in specific places around the planet, and why sea graves are found next to islands. It explains how large masses can move. Tectonic plates are large plates of rock that make up the foundation of the Earth's crust and the shape of the continents. The tectonic plates comprise the bottom of the crust and the top of the Earth's mantle. There are 10 major plates on Earth and many more minor ones. Tectonic plates are formed by pieces of lithosphere that can move and are composed mainly of the oceanic crust or abysm, silicon and magnesium, and the continental crust. They are basically formed by basaltic and granitic rocks. There are four types of tectonic plates. First, we have the oceanic plate. Oceanic plates are thin plates, which are submerged in the bottom of the sea, in the oceanic crust. The second type is the continental tectonic plate. Continental tectonic plates comprise the continents and are lighter than the oceanic ones. Third, we have the mixed plates. One part of these plates is covered by continental crust, and the other part is covered by oceanic crust. These are the most common among the types of tectonic plates. And finally, the fourth type of tectonic plates is the collision plate. Collision plates are those that are having an active continental edge and a passive one. Different major plates are recognized worldwide, namely African plate, Antarctic plate, South American plate, North American plate, Eurasian plate, Australian or Australian Indo plate, Pacific plate, Coconut plate, Nazca plate, Caribbean plate, Philippine plate, and many others. And now let us discuss the tectonic plate boundaries. Plate boundaries mainly consists of three types. However, there is considered as the fourth, which is a mixed type. This is formed in the manner the plates shift in relative to each other. When heat rises, mantle rock migrates upward. Small pods of magma form and rise upward. This is an example of what is happening at a divergent boundary. A divergent boundary occurs when two tectonic plates move away from each other. Along these boundaries, earthquakes are common and magma rises from the Earth's mantle to the surface, solidifying to create new oceanic crust. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge is an example. When two plates come together, it is known as a convergent boundary. At this convergent boundary, the impact of the colliding plates can cause the edges of one or both plates to buckle up into mountain ranges, or one of the plates may bend down into a deep seafloor trench. A chain of volcanoes are often formed parallel to the convergent plate boundaries, and powerful earthquakes are common along these boundaries. The Pacific Ring of Fire is an example of a convergent plate boundary. At convergent plate boundaries, oceanic crust is forced down into the mantle, where it begins to melt. Magma rises into and through the other plate, solidifying into granite, the rock that makes up the continents. Thus, at convergent plate boundaries, continental crust is created, and oceanic crust is destroyed. Two plates sliding one another, forms a transform plate boundary. 
One of the most famous transform plate boundaries occurs at the San Andreas Fault Zone, which extends underwater. Natural or human-made structures that cross a transform boundary are split into pieces and carried in opposite directions. Rocks that line the boundary are pulverized as the plates grind along, creating a linear fault valley or undersea canyon. Earthquakes are common along these faults. In contrast to convergent and divergent boundaries, crust is cracked and broken at transform margins, but is neither created nor destroyed. Previously discussed are the different tectonic plate boundaries, the convergent plate boundary, the divergent plate boundary, and the transform plate boundary, hoping that you have gained a meaningful understanding of the concepts. Based on the concepts of boundaries previously discussed, here are the simple terms used to describe the tectonic plates movement. First is convergent movement, likewise associated to the process of plate convergence. Next is divergent movement, which may be associated to the process of plate divergence. Last is transforming movement, which may likewise be associated to the process called transformed plate. For further assessment of your skills and concept understanding, you are required to write a journal in Earth Science with the title Tectonic Plates Movement, Its Significance and Implications to Everyday Life. Worksheets for the journal writing will be given, and please be guided with the required content of the journal. Number 1. Defining Convergent Plates Movement. Number 2. Describing Divergent Plates Movement. Number 3. Explaining Transforming Plates Movement. Number 4. Identifying Their Relationships. Number 5. The Significance and Implications. And Number 6. Summarizing Big Ideas About Tectonic Plates. Here's to say, thank you to everyone, and that would be all, for today's lesson. Hoping that you have gained a valuable learning, as a product of a meaningful realization about the Earth, where we lived.